Hilarious laughing is from the <laughs> great Sandra Smith, who has agreed to join us on a Friday. She is the co-anchor of America Reports. Um, Senator myself. So, I mean, I think this is a remarkable, first of all, hat tip to the Wall Street Journal, of course. But this is a remarkable story because Florida has more people uh, and spends half the money with virtually no taxes and grows twice as much. I, I mean, just got really? so fired up listening really? to all that. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. But to your last point about Flor look at Florida vote Republican. Yes. Don't you worry, though, that all these folks who have moved down there to enjoy the very policies that have been put in place by those on the <laughs> those on the <laughs> right and fiscal thinking, um, that they're going to destroy everything in their path? They go down there, they enjoy the environment that's been created and then vote quite the opposite? No. No? No, because, I mean, it's an interesting point. Others have made this point to me. They're going down for the right reasons. They're going down to enjoy the low taxes and the few regulations and the open schools and so forth. And the sunshine. Forth. And the sunshine. Yeah, I don't deny that. But I, <laughs> I mean, the, here's the thing between Miami and New York. New York City top tax rate is almost 15%. Miami is zero. Mm -hmm. Zero. Mm -hmm. And so corporations will take advantage of that. Individuals, they want that. They're going over there. And it's true everywhere. You know, we have had so many governors on uh, Iowa, Arizona, Georgia, of course, Texas, slashing tax rates left and right, and populations are My moving. mind is going so many different places when you say this, because the, the journal piece, which I do encourage everybody to read, I read it because you sent it to me <laughs> this morning, and... I, I understand the acknowledgement that Florida has no state income tax. Flor uh, New York's top tax rate is 10.9%. New York City top rate 14.8%. Miami is zero. The piece then goes on to ask this question. Any guess why Ken Griffin moved his Citadel hedge fund to Miami instead of New York? Mm. He was looking for an alternative to Chicago. There's a lot more that goes into that. He was willing to stay. But you know what also destroyed their existence there and their ability to retain and attract top talent, crime. Yes. So you just go back to all these far left policies just destroying everything in their path. Ken Griffin would have stayed there. I mean, you think about the talent that he was able to attract by all those Midwest schools surrounding the Chicago area. That was a big part of that. Um, but crime destroyed that for him. But that's, the, a, that's a good point. I just want to weigh in. That's sure. a very important point, the crime issue. I didn't talk about that. Because already black. It's all about part of the enough. same. But it, it really is. When you look at the blue cities and these prosecutors, these George Soros type Amen. prosecutors, I mean, yeah. that's. So, but I, you know what? Uh, this is something that I talked about with Rudy Giuliani, former mayor of New York, maybe New York's greatest mayor, many, many years ago. Crime. If you cut crime, it's like a tax cut yep. because it incentivizes business. But if you allow high crime, you push economy, you push businesses out. I don't mean to interrupt, but I agree with you. Crime is a key point. But then one number, one statistic you left out of this New York, Florida comparison, the jobs market in Florida mm. is far, it's, 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 it's excelling. I mean, their unemployment rate in Florida right now is 2.5%. Mm -hmm. That's well below the national average, mm -hmm. 3.4. New York's above it, of course, as you would guess, 4.3%. So I I don't know. Add the sunshine uh, and the lack of marijuana smells around every corner, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Why, we, why are we here? <laughs> You're so right. That's such a great point. By Walk the way, around here, nine o'clock in the morning. There's people walking around, openly smoking marijuana. And on then the they throw the they throw the roach away, whatever it is, and our <laughs> dogs eat the oh, roach and get into all kinds problem. of trouble. Yes. I had that trouble. I remember our little dog, our puppy dog, nine months, ten months oh. old, ate a roach, went crazy, was very sick, had to take her to the emergency yeah. animal pet emergency I'm sure you've heard Dana Perino had the same experience. I know, and um, the uh, doctor there said that uh, we were the fifth that oh, night alone. That night? Yes. The fifth for that night oh. was a Saturday night. So that's another good point. New York versus Florida, baby. Let's go on. What are we doing here? I want to nationalize this model because I think, um, I think Joe Biden has already indicated that he's adopted the New York, California, high yeah. tax, high spend model. State of the model. union. Okay, yeah. right. The state of the union had, he had an exhaustive list mm -hmm. of items. But, um, Sanjo, I wanted to mention one, and this is his continued attack on businesses, Amen. on successful businesses, on wealthy people and successful earners. 
And here's my point. On the one side, Joe Biden and others on the left, they love to talk about employment, mm -hmm. okay? The problem is they do everything they can to damage employers mm. who hire yep. the employment, right? I, that was my single biggest... They like biggest... jobs, yep. but they don't like job creators. And that is such a non-starter. And that's what Florida and New York represents also. Oh, no, they like job creators, but they think they're the job creators. The government. Right? He pats himself on the back for the job creation in this country as if government creates jobs. <laughs> that shocks me every time. When I was watching the State of the Union address, Larry, I thought of you because I thought, well, you know, I'm always kind of putting myself in your mind and how you're looking at things because you're one of the smartest economists, smartest mm. guys I know in the Thank room. Thank you. Um, but watching that speech, I could not help but think how anti-business this president right. sounded. Right. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, left, right, red, blue. I listen to speeches from presidents to hear where they are when it comes to business-friendly environment. Right. We will all thrive and prosper if we have someone in the White House who looks at businesses and corporations, big, small, and wants them to thrive. Mm -hmm. That was a very anti-business speech to me. Everything, everything. The taxing, the regulating, even the spending, which carries with it massive regulations. You're right, they believe that government creates jobs, uh, not private enterprise. You know, this was a line used many years ago by the late, great Jack Kemp, was also used by Ronald Reagan. Democrats love jobs, they just hate the people that create yeah. jobs. So if you raise the taxes mm -hmm. on companies, mm -hmm. and Biden was right out there with a whole bunch of tax hikes on corporations, mm -hmm. the people that get hurt are the blue collar wage earners. Mm -hmm. You cutting back on companies' profits, mm -hmm. they won't have enough money to hire or increase wages mm -hmm. or help working families. and that. Democrats don't put that together. I think you can look at the oil industry as a prime example yes. of that demonization yes. of this industry for months on end. Candidate Joe Biden demonized this industry, said he was going to bring the end of the fossil fuel industry, and then now he turns to them for help to bring down gas prices mm -hmm. and puts it on them and that they should be producing more. I think we find ourselves in a very unusual position. I think you heard Larry Summers, his little warning about the Wiley E. Coyote moment. Mm -hmm. I think he's getting his say on looking back on we should have stopped this spending a long time ago, uh, but now we're living through this inflation, and I think there's big questions in the stock market. You saw we had the first, the worst week for U.S. stocks since, I believe, December. Mm. Uh, I think there's a wait and see moment happening right now about where things go this year. But that State of the Union address sent a very strong message. Blue State Tuesday. model. It's the Blue State that New York brilliant model. That's brilliant. I mean it. That's what it yeah. is. Sandra Smith. Thanks for having me, Larry. You, thanks for coming <laughs> on our Friday. You can watch Sandra with co-host John Roberts on weekdays, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox I'm going to go News. keep reporting on this UFO situation. I know. we got to find out. <laughs>